All right, so I guess I'll go and get started. It's a bit of a late crowd, a um, bit of a slow crowd today. Um, so I'm Zach Gunner with Global Vision. Um, not sure how many of y'all went to my net neutrality talk. Um, so um, I am from Greenville, South Carolina, and um, I work for a company called Global Vision. It started as a dial-up ISP um, in 1996. We had a, um, I wasn't around then, I was, born in 1990, so why don't we go and preference that. Um, I wasn't with the company then, um, but they had a T1 that they um, used for their internet connection and then had a bunch of um, phone lines coming in for people to dial out to the public internet with. Um, today, our today our clients range from large companies to, we, still, we have um, about 40% of our customer base is residential. Um, the other sixty percent is uh, commercial. Um, we do everything from a three meg um, residential connection to um, we got a hundred by hundred dedicated connection to a business, um, and we're particularly a wireless ISP. So that means our last mile access method is um, some form of wireless technology, um, and we are not we're not a mobile carrier. Um, our wireless is fixed, so we install. A piece of equipment on a building, and then um, and then it points up at one of one of our towers. Uh, no, we um, we um, our equipment is actually five gigahertz based, and it uses the eight hundred two eleven uh, spec. Um, so um, I also do um, uh, Greenville Towers, um, which is a um, offshoot. Um, for some of the work that I do. And what Greenville Towers do is tower climbing, uh, climbing cell phone towers. That is me on a very cold day fixing um, a ethernet drop uh, because another cell phone carrier damaged it um, when they were removing their own equipment. Um, it doesn't look that high until you see it from my point of view. Um, that is, that is, um, this first set of arms right here is at 100 feet, so that is about 130 feet in the air. Um, and the cars look kind of tiny from there. Um, um, what's unique about running a wireless ISP is we're a small company. We have nine, I think nine people. Um, and so there is, there's not a whole lot of that's not my job or that's not in my job description. Um, and so prior to me coming to Global Vision, we had to pay someone um, $50 an hour to do this work. And this work, um, you know, some of this, you know, this could easily be an eight hour job to do install one antenna because particularly running the cable um, on the tower can be quite difficult um, because it has to be secured every five feet down the tower um, and that could be a two-hour job just by itself. Um, so I got trained. I went down to um, Georgia and um, became a certified tower climber. Um, one thing interesting about tower climbing is fire departments are not your friends because they do not know how to rescue you from anything above their ladder buck, their ladder truck. They'll, they, basically, they'll pull up their ladder truck, go, oh, shit, we can't get up there. Um, and then that, that, that's where the problems start. Um, there was a case in California uh, where a guy was on a cell phone tower. He was 135 feet in the air and he fell um, and his harness caught him. So he's now hanging six feet. Um, so he's out on a platform and he's now hanging six feet below the platform. So he can't pull himself back up because he can't actually reach. Um, and so the you know fire department's called. They come, they pull up their buck, they pull up their ladder truck, and they raise it. Damn, it's only 100 feet. So then they call a, a construction yard, um, a rental, a rental um, construction or rent, rental company to get a, a cherry um, cherry picker man lift. It's only 120 feet. So finally. Um, one of the guy's co-workers called another tower climbing company that was two counties over. It took them 45 minutes to get there, and within 10 minutes of being on, on seat, 
that tower company climbed up, rigged ropes, and rappelled down and lowered the gentleman down to the ground. So the moral of the story with this is you cannot count, doing tower climbing, you cannot count on local fire and rescue to actually rescue you. So that's why we train for rescue. Um, I love it. I love it when like Hack 5 or something like that talks about extreme outdoor wireless and they're still measuring their links and feet. Any, and in the wireless industry, particularly the outdoor wireless industry, the WISP industry, me measuring wireless links and number of feet is a bit of a joke. Um, our longest link is 44, our personal link is 44 miles. Um, it goes from downtown Greenville South Carolina to Cashiers, North Carolina, um, and hits a mountain. Um, our building that we're on is a 335 feet building um, that's got a uh, 35 foot tower on the top. Um, so it, it is the second tallest building in the state of South Carolina. Um, and we're not using cantina and antennas. We're not building these out of Pringle cans. We are buying commercial antennas that we then hook radios to. Um, and actually, hold on a second. Um, so the, um, however, with the, with the same equipment that we use right now, assuming we can get enough vertical elevation, um, the longest record link um, so far with this equipment is 140 miles. Um, and that, that link did 155 megabits um, using 5 gigahertz. Um, the link ran from a, a 8,500 foot mountain near LA to a 8,000 foot mountain just outside of Las Vegas. Um, and they basically went mountain top, mountain top. Um, the problem when you get at 140 feet isn't, tr or 140 miles is not trees, it's the curvature of the earth. So you have to get high enough to just compensate for the curvature of the earth. And it typically is in the neighborhood of several thousand feet mountain tops that you have to do that. Um, the next is um, we um, we just started re recently using a new product from Ubiquity called um, it, it is called the Air Fiber um, Air Fiber 24 HD. It uses 24 gigahertz, which has very little interference on it because tw 24 gigahertz is, is is so high in the spectrum that uh, rain droplets um, attenuate it. So um, it's not also walls walls do horrible things so it's not it's the frequency is special because um home users would never use it so um we can use 24 gigahertz to deliver um uh, 2000 megabits that's um that's aggregated both ways or we can do one gig full duplex at in the greenville climate um we can do about five miles um and if you're out in the uh, desert southwest um, where it is very dry, you could, you could do 20 miles on the same frequencies. Um, so it, it's a matter of the distance. Um, so this is one of the antennas that we use. Um, let me make sure I'm in the camera. Um, this is uh, one of the sectors that we use. It is a um, 120 degrees wide. Um, and th this sector is what we install on a tower and allow clients to connect. Um, this, um, this metal around it is um, um, aftermarket um, RF armor. Um, these radios are inexpensive, or sorry, the, the antennas are inexpensive. So they don't have the best shielding on them. So if we were to mount four of these without RF armor, we would actually in, in, end up interfering with ourselves. So we install these aftermarket, and we can actually about double the performance because we cut the self-interference -interfer almost to nothing. Um, this, with, with the standard Rocket M5 from Ubiquity, uh, this sector can do about 75 megs aggregate. 
So that means all the clients connected to it can push about 75 meg megabits. Um, when you're selling uh, three, five, and 10 meg packages, you, we can fit about 30 customers on here before performance really starts degrading, and then we'll just put another one on the tower. Um, the and 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 this package is not terribly expensive. Um, I think it's about five hundred dollars for the radio, the antenna, the shielding, and the mount. Um, so it's not crazy expensive. Um, and this this particular unit is a uh, nineteen dB. Um, dB is a way of measuring the strength of a basically the power gain of an antenna. Um, and so the, the, the sectors are 19. However, the, um, the equipment that was used for the 140 mile link was a dish. It was a parabolic dish um, that was 34 dB. So a little bit about um, RF. So when, um, I gotta remember the rules because it's been a while since I, so when you go up three dB, um, no, it's when you go up one dB, you double the power. When you go up three dB, you 10x the power. So we're going from a 19, um, yeah, 19 dB on this antenna to a 34 dB. So it is worlds different, and also it's much focused. Um, so instead of spreading the RF energy out like this, it's like this. So that's how we c we're able to complete these long links. Um, in the WISP industry, we cannot afford to pay for licensed spectrum um, like the cell phone carriers can. Um, we don't have, um, you know, 500,000 to get, I mean, 500,000 or a couple of million dollars to get spectrum just in the city limits of Greenville, South Carolina. Um, so we rely on unlicensed spectrum, particularly five, five gigahertz. Um, unfortunately, so do home routers. So does um, Comcast deploying their hotspots on telephone poles and stuff like that. So five gigahertz is a, is a unique animal about, um, yes, it is attenuated by trees. So um, five gigahertz cannot penetrate trees at long distance. Um, so that helps cut down a little bit of the interference from Comcast. Um, but there, there are some um, operators of this equipment that in a Comcast urban area would do a channel scan and basically show all the access points that the antenna can see. And it'll be like three, it can see 300 access points that all belong to Comcast. Um, now there is some new frequency um, or different, some frequency that's coming up under different rules now, and that's a 3.65. Um, the um, some politician put a nice name on it um, as um, civilian citizens broadband or something like that. Some fancy word that actually makes it more confusing. So essentially, what it is is what is unique about 3.65 is they're licensing it per census track. So. In an urban area, a census tract could literally be a block, a one city block. So um, we, we can get exclusive use of part of that frequency for that city block. Um, or in a more you know, suburban area, that might be a couple of square miles that we get exclusive use for that frequency. And it's relatively inexpensive to get those frequencies. Um, using the equipment that we would actually use for the unlicensed would be from a vendor called Telrad. Um, the Telrad equipment is LTE based, so it uses the LTE spec, um, but it runs on 365. But it it is it is still fixed um, wireless, not you know mobile cell phone roaming. And with that, uh, with the LTE, we can do um, a single sector can do over 500 megs. Um, so we can now compete directly with um, a charter in both uh, speed and price doing wireless. Um, so LTE does add some latency. Um, it would average about 30 milliseconds from, from the CPE, from the customer premise equipment mounted on the house to right as it exits our network. So 
um, if you're thinking if you're thinking latency to Google, you uh, like Google's 888, you'd be looking at about 40 milliseconds. Yeah, and, and yeah. Um, however, with the with with the ubiquity equipment that we have in place right now, it is actually incredibly low latency. Um, most of our um, wireless customers um, see single digit uh, ping times to 8888, which it um, charters. I'm at my, my home. I'm on charter because um, I'm not in our service footprint. And um, I, the best I've ever seen is about 35 milliseconds to 8888. Um, so we're doing single digits, um, which is pretty incredible. And the gamers love it. Yes. Yes. We use Staff Technica for 11 gigahertz. Okay, so um, did uh, did you follow the manufacturer's recommendation when they passed the link? Then, if if the antenna is aligned properly, then you should be getting the signal strength numbers that the that the spec sheet says. Then you should get the reliability that the spec sheet says. Which um, we we have a SAF Technica link, which is 11 gigahertz, which is very similar to yours, and um, it's a six mile shot with two three foot dishes on both sides, um, and in the most heavy downstorm, it will drop one level modulation, and um, also um, 